Okay, in this episode, we're going to show you how to create a large diameter gravelless pipe, otherwise known as an enviro septic septic system. Let's initialize Briscad septic assistant. We don't need to um, do anything here on this screen right now. We can say OK, because when we go to open a recent file, this is a file that we just created in our last episode with Ring in the LiDAR. It's going to ask us the same thing. So we'll tell it who we are. Now, we're going to hop right into creating a large diameter gravelous pipe. It's going to ask us where our system is going. Now it's telling us we didn't create enough field data for the program to be able to create a, set, a system. So we know we did. It's just a block. We never exploded it. So all we have to do is explode this. Now we've got enough field data available. Okay, we don't have that problem now. <clears throat> now, because gravelous, large and gravelous pipe systems can be sloped as well as level, we have to determine the system slope, but, excuse me, the site slope where the system's going. So, picking two contour lines, we've got a 20% grade there. For our purposes here, we're just going to do a level system, so we're going to hit zero for the system slope. Number of bedrooms, we're just going to hit enter three. Now this is the data from that test pit that we imported using the, we did, created the contours and things, so we don't need to do that again. It's defaults to standard tubes. If we want to do advanced tubes, now's the time to select that. The, row, the pipe spacing is one and a half feet. System sand width is a foot. You can change that. We're going to do, say, six rows. Saying the system needs to be 35 feet long. Now, let's say we want to put the D block somewhere else. We can do that. Let's say we want to put an end manifold on the end of the bed. Let's say we want to put a vent on the end of the bed. Um, if we decide we want to do serial distribution, <clears throat> this is with one serial row. This is with two serial rows. You notice the venting is there. If we shut the vent off, that goes away. Now, these buttons are available, but they don't do anything with serial venting. It's all in the same place. It gets put on the uppermost row that doesn't have a F1 pipe in it, in case it's a slope system, so the vent is on the high side. Um, we can change our D box size to be a five outlet instead of a three outlet. If we do three serial sections, it does all the piping for the vent and brings it all over on this end. It's doing a bunch of drawing work. And there's our system. <coughs> now, what you can do, we don't like, with, with level systems, you can do this very easily. If you select this, we want the D box up here, for example. If we select that and we go to our Y scale here, if we just say it's minus one instead of one, it mirrors the system for us.
now we're going to bring in a house block, house placement. We're just going to do a rectangle. We're going to say it's 44 feet by 28 feet, which I think is about the size of that block. We're going to, no footing drains, existing structure. It's a sill elevation, not a slab. I want to give it a background color. Transparency, we'll call it 70% transparent. I'll select OK. I'm going to go from corner to corner here. Except corner to corner was up here. So, right click. We're going to do a move, rotate one item. So, we're going to pick this corner. We're going to put it here. We're going to rotate it like that. So, there's our house. Now we're going to put in a septic tank. We'll do a two compartment tank. We'll do a 1250, 350. Again, we're going to do a wipe up behind it. Um, okay. Put our tank over here. Now I've got to do some shore lines, effluent, effluent lines. Now you have to pay attention here. We need to, the way you place these lines has to match. So we're going to do the house to tank line first. You can do them in any order, but we're just going to do this one first. We're going to pick this. Location here for the pipe. We'll put it there. Now we'll hit the enter key. Now we'll go to our tank to EDA line. Enter. We're done. Now these, if you notice these dimension styles. This one is corresponding to the tank to EDA sewer line. Now, these two are the house to tank sewer line. Now if we want to relocate something here, we're going to pick that. We're just going to, that's a poly, that's one polyline. So we're going to pick the vertex here. And we're going to move it. The dimensions change automatically. So if you move things around, um, just pick, don't pick that point because you're going to pick a dimension instead. Don't pick on the vertex, just pick any point on the line. And you can do that. These dimensions are associated with the ends of that line right there. <clears throat> Same with these dimensions here. So now we can do what I've called the... Um, In New Hampshire, we call them EDAs, so it's an EDA bottom calculator. Your state may be SAS or STA, and that's what it will say here. So this is doing several things at once here. If it's a failed system in New Hampshire, we can go to 24 inches to water table. Um, actually... That one, that system needs to be 24 inches to water table anyway, so it really doesn't matter. If you notice, we'll click it. The bed bottom elevation here doesn't change. Same with the 50% rule. Can't use 50% rule on sloped or AES systems. And it threw us out.
So there's our calculated bed bottom. Now we need to put 3 to 1 slope with a 3 foot fill extension. There won't be any finished grade contours. Here's the top contour line. It draws it regardless of where the system is. That's 142. That line's 146, so it's four feet on the ground. So we can effectively delete it. Now, to our profile elevations. This, these are the pipe lengths. These are the foundation height. This is the septic, the, yeah, the, the D-box size. We'll select OK. Now it's giving us minimum pitches here. Now what you might want to look out for, because of rounding precisions, you may have to adjust these elevations a little bit. And then select what you want here. If you want to schedule 40 pipe all the way to the bed, if you want an effluent filter. There we go. And you'll see what we did here is we created a profile. Just move this down here. Created the profile, put elevations on it, including the D-box, tank, elevations, house, pipe lengths. Down down here we've just stated what the elevations of bed bottom, how we size the system. It puts up a block from the manufacturer of the concrete parts here, so you you'll know where they where they came from because every tank is different. If you select the tank, for example, these are all the engineering details of that tank: sizing, weight, compartment sizes, wall thickness. You know everything. To do with that tank is it's it's an attribute that's part of that block. The um, if you prefer to have a table with all the elevations on it instead of being in the profile. We can run through this again. Now this tech time through, it, it knows what the information was from the first time, so it puts it up here. And we'll even populate this stuff if you've pulled up this plan two years from now, because someone did NAS built and changed things, it'll remind you what the existing data is. We want to do an elevation table, say. So there's an elevation table with all the details in it. It's a real table. Yeah. Tables are kind of tricky to move around a little bit. And then in the cross section up here, it said C table, C table, C table. The only thing that it didn't is the pipe lengths, but it does put them in the table also. And it also created this table here, 
which tells you everything about the tank that the installer would need to know. How many gallons, what the in, inlet invert, outlet invert, what the top of the tank elevation is, bottom elevation, length and width. That's um that's it for how I created a large name and a gravelous system. We'll see you next time. We'll um when we get into some more details. Good luck.